Oh, in previous questions, we've dealt with this scenario where we have an ORL circuit, that's a resistor inductor, connected in series with an AC voltage source. And we've worked out how to calculate the equivalent impedance of that load. Z, and because they're in series, it'll be the impedance of the resistor plus the impedance of the inductor. And if we recall from that previous question, the impedance of the resistor is just the resistance. So in this case, it's 15 ohms, because that's given to you in the question. And the impedance of the inductor is a reactive element, so it has an imaginary value, and we need to work out the inductive reactance of that inductor. And we would have seen as well that the inductive reactance depends on the frequency of the supply and the inductance of the inductor of the inductor. Mm. Another way we can actually write that is omega L because frequency times two pi is frequency in radians per second, which is omega. So if we want to work out either the resistive or the reactive part of this overall impedance, we do it the same way as before, except in previous questions, we were given the value of the frequency. We are told frequency is 900 hertz, or frequency is 70 hertz. But it's slightly different in this question, because we're, given, we're not given the frequency as we usually expect it, but we actually get it in the form of this sine wave formula. And if you recall from our notes that this expression here is broken down into the peak value of our sine wave multiplied by the function. It can be sine or cosine. And the general form is omega t plus the phase. So if you're looking for the frequency in radians per second, we're actually given it in the form here. So in this question, omega is actually equal to 40 pi. Let's write that down for ourselves. And now we have all the same information as before, and we can approach this question. So we have the impedance of the resistor, no problem. Let's get the impedance of our inductor next. ZL is J times omega L. We'll just put that in there. That's J times 40 pi multiplied by 7.5 by 10 to the minus 3. And I'm going to do this octave again. Let's just put in a couple of values. We have omega this time. It's 40 times pi. Our inductance is 7.5 millihenries. That means the impedance of our inductor, ZL, will be J times omega times L. So that's coming out then as 0 0.942 J ohms. Let's we'll swap back to the overhead camera there for a moment. So now look, we have both of these values. We can work out that the overall impedance 
is 15 plus 0.942 J ohms. And because we have it in Cartesian, this represents, this is the real part of the impedance Z. And it's equal to 15 ohms, and that's the resistive part of the circuit. And the imaginary part of that complex number is 0 0.942 ohms, and that represents the reactance of the circuit. So again, we approach it the same way. Get the individual impedances, add them together, get the overall impedance and then represent it as a Cartesian. The only difference here is how we were given the frequency oversupply, and this time it was given in radians per second, but just in the form of a sine wave formula. You would take the same approach here for an RC circuit, but just recall that for an RC circuit, the capacitance, sorry, the impedance of a capacitor is minus J C. So slightly different calculation, but the same approach.